kids and parents, it's Mrs. Leanne from Emanuel Lutheran, and I just wanted to share with you a really beautiful book that I found recently. It's called When God Made the World. This book is probably suitable for readers, I would say ages two through seven, um, but anyone can read it really, and it has a beautiful message about how God created the world, how God made you special, and how he made each thing in his creation for a specific purpose. So let's read it together and find out what's inside. It opens with a beautiful illustration of a koi pond. And you can see on the heads of each of the koi, there's a beautiful heart. When God Made the World by Matthew Paul Turner Illustrated by Jillian Gamble. In the very beginning, before anything was, before God started doing what it is God does, when all that existed was wide open space, God imagined a universe and began to create. God hung, hung trillions of lights, stars big and stars bright. God turned the dark sky into a glorious sight. God put planets in places with moons in some cases and galaxies that reached the uttermost spaces. God made comets that fly with tails to the sky and asteroids and meteors that sometimes zoom by. And with cosmic explosions, God set space in motion, causing planets to orbit their sons with devotion. And somewhere amid all the swirling light, inside a cluster of milky white, among stars and planets and cosmic dust, God made a place for the story of us. Cause when God made the world, God displayed heaven's glory for you and for me and for all the world's stories. Our planet God made a blue and green sphere and designed it to orbit the sun once a year. God made a daytime and nighttime, climates and seasons, and all kinds of weather that varies by regions. God made continents and oceans, islands and seas, a north and south pole that God put in deep freeze. God carved rivers and brooks, mountains and caves, made beaches with sand and huge crashing waves. God made tropics and plateaus, glaciers and meadows, marshes and tundras, and erupting volcanoes. You can see the erupting volcano back there. God made some places high with peaks in the sky and places where snowflakes still fall in July. And in quite a few spots, God made it so hot. Should you visit, just know that you must drink a lot. God made valleys so low and geysers that blow and under earth's surface, God put wellsprings that flow. Then with gardens and forests and other things green, God made earth come to life using soil and seed. God made cypress and pines, bushes and vines, all kinds of trees with leaves God designed. Plants full of flavor like basil and thyme and trees that grow citrus like grapefruit and lime. God made flowering plants and plants that enchant while most you can, can touch, God made some that you can't. Roses, be warned, are prickly with thorns, and there's an African melon God covered in thorns. And poison ivy's backlash, giving you a rash. Where's, wherever you touch, wherever it touches, you'll itch and you'll scratch. But don't let that stop you. Run barefoot through grass, pick a flower or two, or a bouquet perhaps. 
Find a tree you can climb, or with a seat and some twine, build your very own swing in the back or a backyard zipline. And when you eat grapes, or pour syrup on crepes, or into a forest you go to escape, give thanks to God for all that God made, for the fruit and the syrup, for the trees and the shade. Because when God made the world, God did it all. God did all that God could to create every detail for our joy and our good. You can see they're enjoying their party in the woods. Now what happened next is a mystery at best, but God made a bird and that bird made a nest. So God filled the sky, perhaps over time, with birds and more birds, and most learned how to fly. God made bluebirds and blackbirds, big birds and small birds, a few birds quite absurd and the, long, the loudest birds you've ever heard. Crows crowded, doves coo, chickens clucked, owls hooed, robins chirped, pheasants whirled, the world got noisy when God made birds. Then the oceans God filled with fish, sharks, and krill, creatures God made with fins and with gills, swordfish and trout, fish sleek and fish stout, and, weather and whales that God made to breathe through a spout. Can you see what's under their boat? It's a really big whale, isn't it? God made sea rays and eels, fish red, yellow, or teal, and some fish so odd that they hardly look real, like a fish that has fangs, or a monster-like face, or a fish that flies, or makes its body inflate. There's all kinds of fish in the ocean. And wherever a river or ocean or sea touches dry land, there's likely to be all sorts of creatures living their lives on land and in water. That's how they survive. Like otters and frogs, turtles on logs, crocodiles gathering in swampy bogs. Can you find the crocodile? He's hiding. And then God made cows, horses, and goats, and God made gibbons with inflatable throats. God planned, planned lions to roar and tigers to pounce, and kangaroos, God thought, <clears throat> let's make them bounce. God made bears to growl, <clears throat> growl, moles to plow, and under full moons, coyotes to howl. Donkeys brayed, giraffes bleated, jaguars prayed, rhinos stamp, stampeded, bunnies hopped, beavers chopped, and in muddy pools, hipples plopped. Yes, all living creatures, from whales to snails, from those covered with feathers to those covered with scales, each God designed with a home in mind to develop and evolve if needed over time. Because when God made the world, every creature on earth became a part of life's circle having value and worth. And God made people like you and me, people with souls, people with stories, a global family tree. God made us all flesh and bone covered in skin and made all our bodies to have hearts beating within. God gave us bellies and legs, fingers and toes and fashioned our faces with eyes, mouth, and nose. God made our bodies uniquely equipped for walking and talking, to eat and to skip. God wired our brains to feel love and to feel pain, to process and learn and read and retain. But despite all we share, we're also unique. God made us all human with just a few tweaks.
each of our faces, bodies, and traits, our skin tones, our features, God did create. God made some people shy and some people loud and some who thrive in the midst of a crowd. Some make music and some like math and some are prone to blaze their own path. But always remember, because this much is true, God has a purpose for making you, you. So use every gift, every talent or shtick. Make the world better than with, with your God-given trick. Bring smiles to faces. Show love and good graces to those who need hope in all different places. Discover a star, a planet or moon, or help keep a forest from dying too soon. Save a whale, hug a tree, protect every bee. Recycle, repurpose, reject apathy. Here's this little boy discovering his purpose. Because all of creation whispers God's story, the mountain, the ocean, the blue morning glory, the raindrops, the sunshine, the grapes on the grapevine. With nature, God gives us a glimpse of divine. Now he's waving to all his friends. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. And just like a star might showcase God's light, or a waterfall give us a sign of God's might, the same could be said of me and of you. How we live, how we love, tells God's story too. Because when God made the world and the world started spinning, the story God wrote was just a beginning. And if we turn the page, it ends how we began, with the koi in the pond, So that is When God Made the World by Matthew Paul Turner. And if you liked some if you liked this book, you might also like some of his other books. He wrote When God Made You, When God Made Light, and When I Pray for You. So you can check out those either at your local library once everything is open or online. But thanks for sharing this story with me today, and I hope that it brought you joy and purpose and meaning, and I think it's one that could be read over the years as your children grow in both their education and in their faith.